The 29th Rhine Infantry was originally the 2nd Berg Infantry Regiment under Napoleon's ally, the Grand Duchy of Berg. Therefore, the first section will be dedicated to the 2nd Berg Infantry Regiment. The unit was formed in August of 1808 and given a bright white uniform with blue facings and a blue chest plate. The uniforms were of French style and therefore the Voltigeurs had a green plume and the Grenadiers a red plume. The unit was organized along French lines and therefore received two battalions with six companies each. One Voltigeur company, which would be short marksmen, one Grenadier company, which would be tall melee warriors, and four regular line infantry companies, which would be made up of everyone who didn't fit in the previous two categories. The raw recruits were enlisted and trained for only two months before being sent to Spain in 1809. It was deployed to Catalonia under Marshal Ajaro and later under Marshal MacDonald. Their first action would come in the Siege of Girona, a Spanish city dating back to medieval times. It was so old that its walls were made of just solid stone blocks. However, it stood between two massive mountain ranges and therefore it had to be taken before the army could continue its advance. Roughly 32,000 French, German, and other ethnic groups under Napoleon's service opposed only 14,000 Spanish soldiers, militia, and even women and clerics who had taken up arms. The siege started in the middle of April, and the 2nd Berg Regiment constituted 1,313 officers, NCOs, and rankers. A Voltigeur company in the regiment was nearly cut off by 400 Spanish peasants in a firefight that claimed three officers, several rankers, and another 15 wounded. The unit stayed mostly in reserve during the siege and donated its two grenadier companies to the front for multiple assaults. They were at the front of a particular assault with 3,500 men, all from elite companies that were given ladders and fascines to use in the assault. The eight Fusilier companies were also formed in preparation to exploit a breakthrough. On July 7th, they launched their attack and it failed dramatically, losing nearly 2,000 men as it was unable to make its mark against the Spanish defenses. The Spaniards were noted to have also killed the wounded with stones and musket fire, as the commander of the Spanish garrison ordered, quote, It should be ensured that no one is alive in 15 minutes, end quote. A monastery was seized by elite Berg grenadiers in early August, but other than that, the lines remained mostly static as the besiegers dug trench lines. More skirmishes took place and in early December the Berg infantry seized the outer works, causing the Spaniards to hand over the city shortly thereafter. The 2nd Regiment lost 709 out of 1,313 men in its siege, and was therefore reduced to just one battalion. It was garrisoned over Girona until being sent back to Germany in late 1810. The regiment was refitted and brought back to its full strength of two battalions in preparation for the 1812 invasion of Russia. The regiment was assigned to Marshal Victor's 9th Corps and was deployed as a reserve in East Prussia until marching to Smolensk in September. They remained there until Victor received news of St. Cyr's defeat at the Battle of Polotsk in mid-October. Victor's Corps marched west to unite with St. Cyr's Corps and fight Russian General Wittgenstein. Victor's march allowed the Russians to capture Vitebsk, which had massive amounts of food materials for the French, and where Napoleon had hoped to end his retreat. Instead, Victor clashed at the Battle of Chasniki, where he was soundly defeated with three times the casualties of the Russians. He fought again at the Battle of Smoliani, where he went even but was still forced to retreat. Victor's corps then marched to meet with Napoleon and participated at the Battle of Berezina, where they held off the Russian armies at serious losses. The retreat in cold weather continued to lower their numbers, and in the end, only 200 troops from the entire country of Berg returned. A new 2nd Infantry Regiment was raised, but wasn't available for service during the 1813 campaign. The Confederation of the Rhine was dismantled on the 4th of November, 1813, and new troops were formed in Dusseldorf in December of 1813. In April of 1814, Berg was completely annexed into Prussian control, and the 2nd Infantry Regiment became the 29th. Uniforms were in short supply, and therefore only a couple companies were outfitted with a Prussian uniform. Most would wear a variant of the local gendarme or militia uniforms. These were fully white uniforms of French coat with French style decorations. The facings, color, and wrists were all of semi bright red with gold buttons lining the front of the chest. They were, however, given proper Prussian hats and greatcoats. For the entire Waterloo campaign, the 29th and their sister regiment, the 28th, would be forced to wear greatcoats on top of two layers of previous clothing while fighting in the humid June heat. They were forced to do this so that the French style and cut of their uniforms didn't make them a target to their fellow Prussians. The organization was made along Prussian standards at the time. The regiment was given one musketeer battalion and one fusilier battalion. A grenadier battalion was raised in May with some unique uniforms. Their chest plates were dark blue with gold trimming and some documents even note dark blue pants, although this has been widely debated on whether or not it was the standard to wear those. Major Ludwig Anton Friedrich Heinrich Eberhard von Heimann would lead the unit throughout the 100 days, and the regiment mustered around 2,000 men at the start of the campaign. Contrary to popular belief, the unit's service actually started before the 100 days campaign. In December of 1813, the unit comprised only two battalions and was still fighting under the banner of Berg. They were sent to Mainz in order to besiege the French forces there with Prussian Landwehr and reserve troops. 
In April of 1814, the French surrendered and the Berg unit was paraded along with the other Prussian troops in the city. They were returned to Dusseldorf where they were put on leave temporarily. In February of 1815, when Napoleon returned from exile, Prussia promptly remobilized for war. The Berg units were sent to Aachen in March, and on March 25th, an order was handed down that the unit would be relabeled the 29th and properly join the Prussian army. They were to be outfitted with regular Prussian uniforms, but these were only handed out after the campaign. This is also the time that the Grenadier Battalion joined the regiment. The regiment then marched to join the rest of the Prussian army. The 29th would be brigaded in the 3rd Brigade, 1st Corps of the Prussian army. They would be under General Friedrich Wilhelm von Jagau, and would fight alongside the 7th West Prussian Infantry Regiment and the 3rd Westphalen Landwehr Regiment. The corps was led by Prussian General Hans Ernst Karl. They were deployed in the Belgian town of Fleurs in late May, and Napoleon crossed into Belgium in early June. Minor skirmishes took place until June 16th, when Blücher decided to stand his ground at the Belgian town of Ligny. The 29th was deployed on the other side of a small creek at the village of St. Amant. A landfair battalion of the 3rd Westphalen was also deployed there. The Grenadiers and Musketeers were deployed in the town with the Fusiliers in reserve. All three battalions would hold off French columns of advance until they were finally thrown back by an entire French division. After regrouping for a short while, the regiment again counterattacked and took severe losses, losing a lieutenant and Major Hyman was wounded in the leg. Ultimately, the counterattack failed, and the Grenadiers and Musketeers had to reform. The Fusiliers were deployed near the artillery batches, and their commanding officers smartly deployed their volunteer riflemen in small ditches ahead of the main line. These riflemen picked off French officers and NCOs from afar, while the main line and the cannons behind it hammered down the French advance until the French coordination broke and they withdrew. The 9th and 10th Musketeer companies were redirected to the main village of Ligny as the French were now making strong headway against the Prussian troops deployed there. The companies were stopped by a small creek and had to quickly create a footbridge to cross it. They were exchanging fire now with multiple French Voltigeur companies and were so close they shouted insults at each other while reloading. Captain Bellmer of the 29th shouted a particularly nasty insult and was killed shortly thereafter, and his corpse was fought over until the Prussians could retrieve it. The French Imperial Guard broke through the Prussian lines and occupied the northeastern heights, threatening an envelopment of the entire Prussian First Corps. The 29th was out of the village and reorganizing when French cuirassiers charged at them, the same cuirassiers that had nearly captured Prussian Field Marshal Blücher. The 29th quickly formed square and fired with such intensity that the cuirassiers were forced off and away from Blücher's body. It could be argued that the 71-year-old was saved by the 29th Regiment. The 29th repulsed more French cavalry attacks and then countercharged to retake six Prussian field guns at the point of their bayonet. The entire 3rd Brigade formed the rearguard of the army, fighting against the French well into the night. This made the 29th involved in the battle from dawn to dusk. Casualties numbered 13 officers, 20 NCOs, and 435 men, nearly one-fourth of the regiment. The Prussian army retreated while being pursued by the French and were held in the village of Wavre on June 18th. Cannon shots could be heard in the distance, and so the 1st Corps were sent over to La Belle Alliance to participate in the Battle of Waterloo. Sources differ on when the 1st Corps took the field, but the 29th Regimental History Book stated that they left Wavre at only 3 p.m., being one of the last units of the 1st Corps to leave the town. Therefore, they unfortunately missed the entire Battle of Waterloo. The 29th, however, was in the vanguard of the pursuit against the French forces and took Avesnes Fortress on June 21st and participated in many more skirmishes until they reached the gates of Paris. On the 1st of July, they fought at the Battle of Issy, repulsing French attacks with their fellow Berg Regiment the 28th. They entered Paris on the 7th of July with the rest of the 3rd Brigade, which was the first unit of the Allied armies to enter the city. They were paraded before King Frederick William II, who was said to commemorate Major Hyman for such a brilliant regiment. The regiment would be made a garrison unit for the rest of its lifetime in the Prussian army until World War I called it into service.